How would you describe your style? Do you know, some days I'm not even sure if I have one because my style seems to be some days really good, some days really shit. <laughs> it's become quite minimal in recent years. Maybe it's because I'm very tired and can't be bothered or something. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. Please edit that. <laughs> no. How do I describe my, my style? Um, evolving, I think, is... <laughs> Uh, and loose. Um, it sounds like a medical thing, isn't it? This? I don't know. I have a style. I don't know if anybody does. I just draw the way I have to. <laughs> it's, well, I suppose you'd say it's clear line. I do. I do a very. You know, uh, I try and make them as un, as unfussy as I can. Um, so there's a bit of there's quite a bit of Hergé influence there. I'm mm. Bosque, of course, um, and I'm trying to pare it down all the time. So, I, but other than that, I couldn't describe my style. It's just the only way I know how to draw. I would describe my style as colorful and weird kind of surreal but definitely with like a strong basis in reality like you know the people tend to look like people the animals well I don't know if the animals look like animals but uh yeah I, I feel like it's sort of reality with a twist like I and I, I would I would think that you could tell by looking at it that the person who did it was like maybe slightly dark or twisted I don't know maybe they had done some hallucinogens that's how I've described it before I don't, I don't know what how would I describe my style um, I, I probably wouldn't describe it really. I think um, I wouldn't say it's something that I give that much thought to. I think the, the style is something that you arrive at through sort of trial and error, I suppose. Uh, and it's dictated by what your limitations are as well, I suppose. I did, I did hear somebody, um, I think it might have been Steve Bell, and I, if it's not him, I apologize for misquoting him, but another cartoonist who did say uh, that what other people call your style is what you call your mistakes or your limitations, you know? So um, yeah, it's just, you, you've sort of arrived at that over a period of time. I just enjoy drawing. And um, I think because I've only picked up a pencil again in the last five or six years, as opposed to like way back in yonder when it was a GCSE art, um, I'm still kind of finding what I like to do and how I like to draw things. Um, so I haven't, my style hasn't set and it, and actually to be honest, I hope it never does because it's a bit, <laughs> I'd be a bit bored otherwise. Every so often I find something new and I go off down that corridor and, you know, I mean, at the moment um, I'm doing lots of big sort of acrylic paintings, which um, have jokes on them. So it's just a bit of everything. Um, yeah. I, I like to, what I aim for is, is uh, loose, wonky, simple, childlike, silly. Um, whether or not I achieve that, I don't know, but um, that's what I aim for. My style um, is still evolving. It has changed quite a lot over the years. Um, when I look back at my early stuff, I do cringe. I was a bit intense overdrew everything um i'm still a little bit anal about it all the lines meeting up and so forth um and i would like to be more loose and fluid but that's that's not me really i try to keep it loose and try to keep it look keep it looking relaxed um sometimes overdrawing it doesn't do that but i like to keep it looking a bit fluid if i can and sometimes i go over like people do i go over stuff a few times to make it look more fluid you know? Um, I think the danger is um, overworking things. That's a very difficult question for me. I mean, what award? I did win an award from the um, museum, and that was the Pont Award for drawing the British character. So I suppose that might answer the question. Um, I just thought of types of people that I knew or even ones I didn't know, and just drew them as I thought they would look and be. I don't know how you'd describe it, really, but I mean, the pod thing is as good as any, I suppose, drawing the British character. No, I used to cram in a huge amount of detail yeah. into a very small space, and then it gradually dawned on me that I'm not sure that people can be bothered to look at, or can't actually focus on that amount of detail and take it in. And so I started doing more sort of just sparing kind of drawing. And it worked a lot better, I think, in my opinion, 
than all the detail. Yeah. And so that's the direction my style went in. Right. And I like to keep it now as simple as possible. Well, it's, it's developed, or perhaps the opposite of developed. It's regressed since, since I was young, because I used to do very elaborate stuff. And now it's getting simpler and simpler. Um, I like to think that I've, uh, I've pared it down. I'm like the Beckett of the, uh, the cartoon world. But in, fa in fact, this is, I can't be asked. I like to get things right if I'm gonna draw a 15th century Belgian philosopher, for instance, I will search to see what kind of clothes a 15th century Belgian philosopher would have worn, um, rather than just guess at something, because you just know someone out there is gonna spot that you've got it wrong. I would say it's comical, certainly, um, uh, but not in a, and it's actually edging sometimes onto a comic style, even sort of Beano style occasionally. But then sometimes I will draw something like this, which was in Private Eye recently, which is a far more complex picture and a very different style from my usual one. And I think style is often actually, it often changes depending on how big I'm working. Yeah. So for instance, I've got a certain style for the um, Metro work and that has to be squashed down. And actually it has to be squashed down so much that I also have to include a speech bubble because when I first started working for them, I was writing things on the top and they said, don't you put a round thing around that? Because I was thinking they were gonna print the actual line. And I realized they meant, oh, can you do a speech bubble? So I said, okay, right, I'll do a speech bubble. So now I've got even less area to work. I still draw um, in the old fashioned way, I suppose, um, pen on paper. And usually like other people do this, scan into the computer and work on, mm -hmm. on the computer to add color, tone, and erase errors and what have you but um yeah in the early days my style was like i say very up and down i was, I was more i was influenced on uh, by people like mike williams and martin honeysett and um, i tended to lean towards other people's styles rather than um developing my own initially i like wordless cartoons yeah yeah again that's the kind of larry boss i, I love the whole um i do love the a lot of the french sans parole kind of cartoons so chaval um people like that um uh yeah that, i think that's the hardest thing to do is a captionless cartoon i mean i tend to go between the two I either do a very cap a captionless one or i do very wordy ones you know and i don't, I don't think my style really settled down um to what it is now, um, to about maybe possibly 20, 25 years ago. So it took me a while to find a style that was mine, I suppose. I've always been dissatisfied with my, my drawing, so that looking looking to perfect it all the time, I suppose. And uh, I did have a an old signature, which I used to use with the old repeatograph, which was um, a lowercase dredge. I used to fill in the O's and the D's and, it used to take longer to do the signature than the drawing. I'm going to have difficulty actually describing my own style because it's not, um, sometimes it's like other people's, <laughs> and sometimes it isn't. And um, yeah, it varies. I'm going to leave it at that. It varies wildly. <laughs>